Welcome to City Happenings. I'm Mayor David Black. We're into November and that means winter's coming. We'll talk about our snow removal policy as well as take a look at how we prepare our snow removal equipment. With the holidays not far away, we'll tell you where you can get your holiday fruitcake and help a good cause at the same time. Here's City Happenings for the week of November 9th. Thanks, Mayor. We're hitting the snow season and our public works department is set to plow. When we go into a full-blown uh, snow removal operation, uh, we'll send 19 pieces of equipment out onto the street. Uh, we've got four quadrants that we kind of break them down in. Uh, when, when we first roll, you'll see uh, anywhere from six to seven trucks kind of in a big group, and they'll take our major arterial routes, the 84th, 72nd, Shram to Giles Road and 96th Street. Running those main arterials, run us about an hour, hour and a half, and then those trucks will break off into pairs and, and kind of work with the other group of our 11 four by four trucks that we have uh, designate cul-de-sac routes, plus they help on our secondary streets and that. While that's all going on, we have one truck that's just designated to run Highway 370 from our 68th Street city limits all the way out to 108th Street. And, and that so we uh, he's pretty much just assigned to that highway 370 corridor uh, while we're doing that we've got a total of 225 lane miles in the city of papillion that we maintain with our fleet of vehicles and that so there's there's a little ground to cover usually once we start rolling and if it's not a continuous snow uh, usually we can wrap up our whole operation in about eight hours then once that's done then we've got our trails and sidewalks that we hit uh, big, big thing that we hear, uh, you know, is uh, sidewalks, you know, or you're putting snow back on my sidewalks and on my driveway. Uh, we, we go curb to curb and as, usually we don't try to go back once we've gone curb to curb. But uh, so once we've been curb to curb, well, we ask that you get your sidewalks and your, your driveways cleared. And we ask that you try to keep that snow from not throwing it back on the street because that just causes us, us all kinds of problems, that stuff will freeze back up and it, it just is a, a hazard to the motorist public. So you can keep that stuff on, on the right of way area and that not throw that back into the street. That is just so much helpful for us. Before the plows can hit the street, the equipment must be prepped. Snow removal equipment readiness starts about the first part of October. Mm -hmm. Last anywhere from 30 to 45 days, it just depends on what the fleet maintenance staff has for other breakdowns in that. But uh, basically we bring all of our fleet of about 20 vehicles in. They, they check, they go over them from tires, from basically bumper to bumper, check out. Uh, we hook up the plows, make sure all the fittings are gonna couple, you know, they sit. When we, when we unhook them in the, in the spring, uh, we do, try to sanitize them, clean them all up so that they're put away in, in good shape. But just sitting outside in the elements from, from spring to fall, things do rust up and bite, button up and tighten up. So we have, to, we have to check all that stuff. We check the plows, make sure that the hydraulics and all that that are working. Uh, it's just basically a bumper to bumper check to make sure that everything is, is fit and ready to go. We have. Uh, sanders that we have to put in our dump trucks and get them all hooked up because we take them out in, in the spring so we can utilize them to haul, uh, haul materials and other things that we do during the spring and summer months and fall for our maintenance activities around the city. So it's just not like uh, they say a snow's coming and, and the next day we can be prepared for a snow removal. It's, it's just not that easy. Some of the trucks, you know, we, we can slap the plows on and, and be ready to go, but uh, Getting all of our de-icer equipment and our sprayers and, and on all of that stuff ready, just it does take some time. Holiday fruitcakes certainly have a tradition in America. Buying a fruitcake now helps Midlands Hospital. 27 years ago, we decided we wanted to help the hospital out. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of our volunteers had a good recipe. It's been an old family recipe. And uh, she donated it to the volunteers and we started to make cakes but we started in our homes and uh, it got to be quite a project. So uh, the hospital volunteered the kitchens for us and uh, it's just taken off since then. So I remember the first day we baked, we baked 15 cakes and we thought, oh, <laughs> they're wonderful. 
but you know, when you do everything in one day with a, with a small crowd, it, t it took a lot of time. But we have progressed through the years. As you can see, now we're doing about 250 or so a night. We just benefit the hospital. If they have a special request, that's where the money goes. The hospital is the, is the big gain on it. They get all our money that we make. So, I mean, you know. <laughs> no, all, all the money we make goes right back. It goes into the hospital. Our fruitcake doesn't have any citron in them. And they're, it's just packed full of pecans and fruit. And they have to work very hard pushing it into the pan so we don't have holes. And we have a quality control, which Evelyn is on part of that line. And, and each one is weighed, and so they weigh properly the same amount. It's nothing but dates, pecans, candied cherries, and candied pineapple, and the other secret ingredients to hold it together. <laughs> That's what's happening around Papillion. For more information about the city, please go to www.papillion.org or just call the mayor's hotline at 827-1111. Thank you for watching.